I'm going to go over these uh, three case studies with you, and one is, I think, a questionnaire. So let's go over this one. This is the most lengthy one. So again, uh, talking about the concept of tissue integrity, and our exemplar is pressure ulcers. And this is Appendix 16, which is in your weekly lesson plan after your um, weekly uh, uh, lesson plans with your assigned readings. All right. Uh, Agnes Pym, uh, age 77, recently underwent knee replacement surgery. She was hospitalized for a week after surgery, after which she spent four weeks at a rehabilitation facility. She returned to her home earlier this week and has arranged for a home health care agency nurse to visit her daily. Her surgical incision and the bone are healing well. During her time at the rehabilitation facility, however, she developed a stage 3 pressure ulcer on the leg where her supportive knee brace rubs against her skin. She does not want to take the brace off because she does not want to leave her knee unsupported. However, the ulcer is causing her a great deal of pain, especially since she has been weaned off the prescription pain medication she was taking post-op. You, uh, you are the nurse assigned to Mrs. Pym during her visit to her during your visit to her home, you obtain a history and perform a physical assessment. You note that Mrs. Uh, Pym's husband died six months ago after a lengthy bottle battle with prostate cancer. Mrs. Pym states uh, she hasn't felt much like eating and states that what she does eat is canned or frozen. As a result, her diet is high in sodium and low in protein, and Mrs. Pym has a history of hypertension. She also indicates that she is a smoker. She has smoked on and off for 50 years, having quit several times during those years. She indicates that she always returns uh, to smoking during stressful times. She wants to be as independent throughout her recovery as possible. She has turned down an offer from her son to stay with him. She does not want to return to the rehabilitation facility because it made her feel very cramped and claustrophobic. Mrs. Pym is clean and well-groomed and her home is tidy. She is thin but is very strong and shows no signs of frail frailty. She is capable of performing most ADLs but mentions that the surgery and the pain from the ulcer have slowed her down and that she sometimes takes all day to get washed, dressed, and picked up um, to the house. Sorry about that. Her vital signs are Tempest 98.3, her respiration or her pulse is 75, respirations are 20 per minute, and her blood pressure is 141 over 84. Upon inspection of the pressure ulcer, you note that it is roughly 4 centimeters by 4 centimeters stage 3 ulcer that involves full thickness skin loss with damage to the subcutaneous tissue. No necrotic tissue is present and the underlining bone, tendon, and muscle are not exposed. Undermining and tunneling are not present, and there is no sign of infection or inflammation. You clean the wound and apply a hydrocolloid uh, dressing, which should be changed every third day. You then contact Mrs. Pym's surgeon, who indicates that she no longer needs to wear the brace. The medical provider states that if Mrs. Pym feels she needs some kind of support, she can wear a soft, elastic brace to sleep in or walk with. The provider also indicates that she can use over-the-counter pain medication. All right, there is our um, patient, and as you can see, um, she already has a uh, pressure ulcer, which is stage three, and so uh, what I want you to do with this is just to kind of look at her situation, okay, and think about all the risk factors that um, are present with this particular patient. Um, Obviously, her age, she's 77, um, and of course, we know what caused the pressure ulcer. Um, she had that brace on her skin, and it just kind of concerns me that no one had noticed it prior to this, that that pressure ulcer got to be a stage three at this point. So um, nobody was really uh, making sure that that pressure ulcer, I mean, that brace was on too tight. So our, my concern with hers, and I'm sure yours are too, is the fact that she lives alone, but she seems to be in good um, health. Um, I'm concerned about her diet because uh, for the healing process to occur, um, 
as I mentioned with the PowerPoint earlier or in the last video, um, we, we, can, we worry about the amount of protein that she's getting and she doesn't seem to be getting a lot of that and we're worried about her blood pressure too because she's eating a lot of canned, um, canned food which has a high content of sodium. So we want to make sure her blood pressure stays in control. Now it's up to 141 over 84. It's not too bad right now, but we want to make sure that it doesn't go up any higher. Um, another concern I have is uh, no protein, no vitamins, and some of the other um, uh, minerals that she should be getting in her food that she's probably not um, she, because she doesn't have much of an appetite and she does state that she doesn't feel much like eating. Um, Again, understanding the importance of keeping off of that uh, ulcer. And I'm concerned that if she doesn't have that knee brace on, she won't get around and move. And I don't want that uh, pressure ulcer to, uh, you know, be um, a, a sore that's going to progress into a stage four. And, of course, with her immobility, that could happen. Uh, she may also develop a pressure ulcer somewhere else. But thank goodness that her surgical incision and uh, the bone are healing well after she had her uh, knee replacement surgery. Uh, another concern I have is the fact that she smokes. So I'm worried about the fact that she may have some underlying cardiac and respiratory problems. So she does have two very serious chronic health problems such as COPD and um, maybe some cardiovascular disease as well since she continues to smoke and has smoked for 50 years. She's going through some stress, um, but she's trying to be come, you know, be independent and take care of herself. Uh, not sure who is going to change these dressings if she was educated on changing these um, dressings every third day. But I think a professional should be coming into the house to assess that wound to make sure that it is uh, healing well and that she's not developing any complications such as an infection or um, any type of tunneling that may occur um, and things like that. And, of course, to keep um, watching her blood pressure as well. So what I'd like you to do um, is take this uh, scenario of Mrs. Pym and I'd like you to do a linear concept map on her. And then um, we can talk about it at a later date. Um, you've had these in Nursing 120, 100, so I'd like you to just, you know, do your best, and then we can talk about what should be in those circles, okay? But um, I just worry about this patient, and... Of course, with her pain, she may not, uh, you know, get up and move around as well. And, um, you know, that may limit her to cooking for herself and keeping her house up as well. So there's a lot of issues that can be involved with this patient's problems. And um, I just want that wound to heal as readily and her to continue uh, healing from her surgery as well. And that something doesn't happen where she falls and breaks her hip or something like that. So... Uh, a lot, a lot of problems can happen when you have a situation like this. So, you know, one day she's fine, but the next day with a fall or an infection incurring, um, that could be a, a real serious issue. So that's Appendix 16 with um, our um, patient, Mrs. Pym, who just went through uh, a knee replacement surgery and now has developed a pressure ulcer because of the fact that her uh, brace rubbed against her skin. So what I'd like you to do is create a linear concept map. Okay, what I want to talk about now is Appendix 17. All right, and let's talk about these. So I want you to kind of think about the answers to these um, because we know that with pressure ulcers, um, infections can occur as well. So what assessment findings with question one would, you, would cause you to believe that a pressure ulcer is um, infected? So think about what 
you would expect to assess on a patient who has a pressure ulcer and who definitely uh, has one that's infected. Well, I would think that the pressure ulcer would appear infected if it were warm, red, and if it had drainage coming from it, and that drainage may be very odorous, uh, swollen, and as I said before, have some exudate coming out of it. The, pla the patient may also have a fever. She, he or she may have chills. And then if we did a um, CBC and diff on her, we would see that she would possibly have an increased white blood cell count, especially her neutrophils, if, it, if the infection was caused by a bacteria. And many times with infections, the patient would also experience pain. So we'd want to see at what level that pain is at. Um, you know, is it a is it a three or is it an eight? That would be very important to know. All right, question two. What nursing interventions can be implemented to reduce the risk of infection of a pressure ulcer? Obviously, to reduce this risk of a possible infection, we would definitely keep the wound clean, administer treatment as ordered for wound care. Anytime you're going to change the dressing, you're going to clean the wound as well, and to keep the patient off the wound. All right. So positioning is of utmost port of importance to avoid getting an infection in that. So if we link the exemplar of pressure ulcers with the concept of mobility, contrast appropriate nursing interventions to prevent pressure ulcers in a patient who's 6, who's 30, and who's 80. So if all of these uh, different age group patients were immobile, we would pretty much use the same type of nursing interventions to prevent the patients from getting a pressure ulcer. Um, but a lot of times we see someone that's 80, uh, maybe immobile, but then we might see additional problems such as incontinence and maybe even confusion. We don't know what the patient's um, cognitive ability is at this point. Um, whereas uh, the other patients, 6 and 30 years of age, um, are likely to move on their own and probably wouldn't be incontinent and probably are not confused. And the care for each one of these patients will definitely depend on their nutritional status, injury, or surgery, and what their level of mobility is, and even what their health history is as well, um, and how, how independent they are, especially the 30-year-old. Um, does he have any serious health issues? And the same with the 6-year-old. All right. So this is... Um, something you'd have to look at very specifically to see really what the patient's health history is and what are their present problems um, right now. All right, this last question is, you are caring for a child who is involved in a bicycle accident resulting in a below-the-waist paraplegia. Uh, how will you teach the patient to parents to reduce the risk of pressure ulcers? Um, really teaching this child about changing position often to make sure the child uh, sits with equal pressure, especially on bony uh, areas, and to instruct him to shift positions, especially if he's going to be in a wheelchair most of the time. But um, And having uh, assistive devices maybe uh, around the house uh, to, um, you know, make sure that, the, that he can move and, and be safe at the same time. All right? So that's Appendix 17. So let's go to um, Appendix 18. Um, again, reflecting on um, pressure ulcers. All right, let me move this over so we can have this one in our screen. All right. All right, again, we have uh, Lydia Ocampo. She is a 69-year-old widow who has recently been moved from a rehab center to the skilled nursing wing of a nursing facility. She is still receiving care related to surgery on a broken hip a couple of months before. I think you can remember we talked about Lydia before. Um, and before that, she had lived in the home that she shared with her husband of 50 years. He died a few weeks ago. Lydia has Alzheimer's disease at the nursing home. She exhibits intermittent confusion and is, is alternately passive and uncooperative uncooperative with the staff and over the course of the next month 
Her condition has deteriorated. She eats very little and is fairly unresponsive to caregivers. She sleeps often. So what data suggests that Lydia is particularly vulnerable to pressure ulcer development? Um, well, she recently broke her hip in surgery, and because of her cognitive ability and her Alzheimer's, um, she's very uncooperative, uncooperative with the care that we're trying to provide her, um, her poor diet, her lack of response, and obviously um, the problem with the mobility. She's not moving around and um, the fact that she's sleeping a lot. So question two, what additional information do you need in order to use the Braden scale to determine Lydia's potential for pressure ulcer development? We would have to assess her sensory perception, um, moisture on the skin areas, um, and of course friction and shear. We already know her uh, activity level, mobility, and her nutrition. And all it is is just going back and reviewing that Braden scale. And I have loaded and uh, uploaded a copy of the Braden scale into your Canvas course under week three, so you can review that. There is also a copy of that in your concepts book as well. So it was just a matter of remembering the six um, 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 factors that you would assess uh, to determine uh, a patient's Braden score. So question three, uh, what independent measures can you take to protect Lydia's skin from further breakdown? Um, obviously repositioning frequently. Her skin should be kept uh, clean and dry. She sh could also be put on some um, air or water mattress, making sure we use devices such as wedges or foam pillows and float the heels so that they're not up against the uh, bed sheets because that's a great area for people to start having that blanchy, um, mushy type of skin, especially on the heels of an individual. And lastly, the question four, considering that Lilia does not have any areas of skin broke, breakdown, why is it important to institute treatment for pressure ulcers at this time? Because she's um, got a lot of the risk factors. She's frail, She's not eating and is in need of complete care, and she's not able to take care of herself, nor is she redirectable due to the fact that she has Alzheimer's. So that pretty much um, is a review of these um, questions and case studies and situations that involve pressure ulcers. So um, be sure and look these over again, and then definitely look at that first one we did, Appendix 16, and do on your own a concept map as well. Um, thank you guys for your attention. Um, and uh, I know some of you are very interested in um, wounds and maybe one day after graduation would like to be a wound care nurse. And that would be just really fantastic. And I know many of you out there would be just really great at that um, specialty. So um, thank you so much for your attention. and. You all have a, a wonderful day.